Field Notes by Louis Vivancho. Chapter 7, Asking Questions. In addition to observing and listening, asking questions is the lifeblood of ethnographic field methods. As a strat strategy of directed learning, it is critical for eliciting information, ex explanations, oral histories, and other spoken data. Although realistically speaking, it is impossible to record everything exactly that is said or done while interviewing somebody, as is the case for listening. It is also a means of creating and maintaining social relationships because most people respond favorably to respect inquiries and curiosity about their lives. When asking questions, you should always be sensitive to context, knowing what to ask when, your relationship with the respondent, the presence of other people, what the respondent is done doing at the time, what you want to know about, the formality or informality of the interaction, and so on. All these factors will shape how you ask questions and the kind of answers you get. The more you know a community and its norms, not to mention the individuals you are interviewing, the easier it can be to know what to ask when, though oftentimes you just won't know these things until you begin asking questions. Moreover, there are different approaches to asking questions, including the following surveys. The researcher creates the question and gives fixed responses from which respondents choose. The researcher or respondent fills in a form, which typically is used to create quantitative data and support the use of statistical methods to identify generalizable patterns. Survey data are thin and undimensional, and if such data play a role in ethnographic research at all, it usually it is usually to produce baseline data. Example, income distribution, residency patterns that is often followed up with qualitative methods, structured or informal interview. The researcher works from a list of previously prepared questions, assuming he or she knows the important questions to ask. To ensure consistency across interviews, the researcher goes over the exact questions and sequence of questioning for each interview, but does not assume that he or she knows the possible responses. Notes are taken and audio recording is made or both to later transcribe into an interview script. Open-ended interview. The researcher wants to cover certain general topics and issues. Loosely guiding the interview, there is no particular order or manner in which questions are asked and new questions emerge during the interview. Notes, head notes, or an audio recording are taken. Oral histories, which are interviews focused on an individual's personal experience of a historical process or situation, typically follow an open-ended style of questioning. Informal conversation and hanging out. Informal conversation, exchange, or hanging out in which questions emerge from immediate interactions and context, it rarely feels like a research event or even an interview, and note-taking is often de-emphasized in favor of headnotes. Group interviews. During fieldwork, many interviews are conducted one-on-one -on -one because the individual has particular knowledge or perspective that the field worker wants to learn about. But sometimes field workers conduct group interviews of three, four, or more people because there is a spontaneous gathering or a deliberate invitation, such as to a focus group. Although there aren't as neutral as informal interviewing and hanging out, one benefit of a group interview is that participants can respond to each other and generate interactive conversation. Beginning field workers uh, often assume they should integrate a survey into their research if for no other reason than it feels like objective research. But from the vantage point of ethnographic field work, one of the limitations of surveys, which applies to structured interviews as well. 
is the assumption that the researcher knows what questions to ask and the order in which to ask them. The assumption can get in the way of comprehending tactic, tacit native categories, assumptions, and meanings. One of the goals of asking questions in ethnographic fieldwork is to get people talking and telling stories, letting them shape or co-shape the convert conversation to allow for their assumptions to come through. As a result, ethnographic field workers tend to rely heavily on open-ended interviews and informal conversations. This is the field work trip, or I'm sorry, field work tip. To record or not to record, that is the question. Many field workers selectively audio record important interviews with a digital or tape recorder but there are pros and cons of using an audio recorder and when they use one, experienced field workers do not rely on it alone, often taking notes alongside the recording. So here's the pros and cons should you wish to write the graph down. Asking questions to get people talking. So how does a field worker ask questions to get people talking? There are a number of considerations. Establish comfort and be clear about your intentions. Explain why you requested the interview, which you probably already did when you asked for it in the first place. But you can elaborate now and what you plan to do with it, the material it generates, and let the respondent know how long it should take. Receive informed consent. Be prepared. If someone is generous enough to sit down for a formal interview, don't waste his or her, her time. Make sure you are prepared with questions and issues to cover and strive to keep it focused on the themes of your research. If it's informal interview, have a mental framework on which to hang out, hang your questions. Sometimes opportunities emerge spontaneously to conduct an informal interview and other times reading questions from a list during an interview may feel disruptive. Develop a sense of a sense what of questions you'd ask ahead of time and the order you would ask them in. For example, in, in informal interviews, I typically have a general sense ahead of time of what I want to know, but I mentally hang the flow of my questions during the actual interview on a loose past, present, future framework. Starting with the past, my goal is to ask several questions about each period, ensuring that before I move on to the next one, I've satisfied my curiosity or exhausted my questions. Although nobody can tell the future, I still ask about, about it because it reflects hope, hopes, values, and intentional plans. Recognize that good questions come in different flavors. There are different categories of questions that can elicit useful data. These include the following adapted from Spradley, 1979. Questions that ask for generalities, asking about what's typical such as, tell me about a typical day in your life, or what kinds of tasks do you generally perform in your job? Questions about experience, asking about specific personal experiences such as, could you tell me how about how you felt when, question, what was it like to live through, question, event, situation. Detail-oriented questions, often posed as follow-up follow questions, such as, could you explain what was happening in your life when, question, can you give an example of, question. Key resource, James Spradley's The Ethnographic Reef Interview. Spradley 1979 is a classic resource on ethnographic interviewing techniques. Questions that elicit native categories. Asking questions about how an individual refers to or conceptualizes something such as how do you refer to or what is the difference between a and a. Questions that asks for stories. Asking individuals to tell you stories about what you're interested in learning such as can you tell me a story about even people who aren't great storytellers often like to tell stories and letting them decide what what stories they'd like to tell reveals their assumptions about what might be important poignant 
funny, insightful, and so on, know how to actually frame a good question. There is no magical recipe to constructing good questions, but avoid questions that elicit a yes or no answer, which don't lead a respondent to elaborate. Questions starting with why should be used with caution, especially if they lead respondents to speculate about something they don't know about. Instead, construct questions around concrete and specific issues respondents are likely to know about and elaborate on. <laughs> Excuse me. Using constructions such as, what do you think about? How do you? Tell me about. Be aware of biased language or leading questions and use neutral expressions. For example, asking, why do you support the death tax? Code among American political conservatives conservatives for estate taxes is too leading. Instead, ask, ask something such as, what do you think about estate taxes? Use direct questions with caution and ask around the central issues that interest you. You will ask, always have some specific questions to ask directly, usually to elicit certain information or details, but approaching things directly can unintentionally lead a respondent to provide the kind of answer that reflects what you think and what not what he or she means, or it will give you an unsatisfying brief answer, especially if the respondent hasn't given much thought on, to the issue. So for example, in my own research on the meaning of environmentalism in Latin America, I have rarely asked people directly, why are you an environmentalist. This assumes that when the person thinks of his herself that way, she may not. And there is an agreed upon idea of what an environmentalist is. Instead, my questions probe around the topic, such as when and why did you get involved in the environmental group? Or can you think of a time when you disagreed with something the environmental group did? Can you explain why you disagree? Ask questions with networking in mind. An important way to find out who is in a social network is to ask respondents about it. Field workers often ask such things as who else was involved or who else can I talk to learn more about this? Sometimes called a snowball method of recruiting participants in the research, following up with interviewing questions, requests to those new individuals, expands the field worker's social network as well. Know how to keep it going. Remember to be patient when you are listening to allow an individual time to compose a response, but when things really slow down, enthusiasm wanes or a lag appears, you can double back on things said previously and ask follow-up questions. Can you explain why you reacted that way? What happened next? Also pay attention to repeated words. Usually they indicate something significant to the individual and follow up with questions about the issue to which they refer. Know when to stop. Try to stick to the time frame you indicated at the outset but also willing, be willing to cut it short or to go longer. In response to enthusiasm, body language, or any other many interpersonal or external dynamics, make sure you give profuse thanks, maybe even a gift. Not only is someone being generous and helping you out, but leaving on good terms can help you if you want to ask more questions later. Whom to interview? Just as important as knowing how to ask good questions is knowing whom to put them in, put them to. Although the selection of interviewees tend to evolve and get more focused over the course of a project, strategic field workers generally look for these types of people. Gatekeepers, formal, formal or informal social leaders, in addition to usually knowing a lot about what you're interested in, Going through gatekeepers can help identify others to interview and can lead legitimacy to the fieldwork itself. Sometimes it is necessary to go through gatekeepers first. Other times it is it, it 
it's not entirely clear who the gatekeeper is. Some gatekeepers may try to control and shape the research. Self-selected self individuals, talkative individuals forward about sharing their concerns and perspective or those individuals closely tied to your research topics who demonstrate interest in your project. Be aware that sometimes they are doing it because they have a particular agenda. Reflective individuals, observant, thoughtful people who are sometimes on the margins or are outsiders in their own social setting. Knowledge keepers, individuals associated with certain body language body of knowledge interviews of these individuals are often direct and focus yielding specific details about particular issues or concerns is it important to select interviewees who provide a representative sample of the community in general it is better to hear from more not fewer people but it also depends on the research questions for some projects it can be useful to understand the heterogeneity and range of ideas, experiences, and perspectives within a population. It is also important to triangulate what people tell you. That is to test and verify the details of what you are told with other people. But it's not always clear what the boundaries of the population actually are. And field workers usually just have to do their best to achieve representatives by comparing who is selected for interviews with what is known about the population more generally. Hammersley and Atkinson, 1995. 7.1, asking good questions. This exercise has two parts. In the first field, first a field work scenario is briefly presented followed by with some interview questions to model group question asking. In the second part, you will fill in the questions. Part one, you are doing fieldwork on concepts and experiences of bodily discipline and suffering among members of the, your college's cycling team. You have set up an interview with the team captain to learn about the team's training regimen. You might wanna ask these sorts of questions. Who plans and runs the team trainings? What are the goals of a training session? What kinds of training do team members do outside of the team practices. Can you describe a typical team training ride? During a training ride, how do, you, how do team members show they're experiencing physical or emotional difficulties? And how do other team members respond? How do you respond? Is there a team member who has had an especially trying time with an injury or other problem? Do you think I could talk to him or her? And then here is your directed learning, asking good questions and networking. Part two, develop good interview questions for these scenarios. You are doing field work on interactions between student government and university administration. To understand campus, campus power relationships, you have a setup you have set up an interview with a member of the Student Senate. What five questions should you ask? B, you are doing fieldwork in a grocery store in your community to study labor conditions for women workers. You have set up an interview with a middle-aged woman who is a cashier. What five questions would you ask? Take a semester fieldwork project you are currently planning or dream when at briefly explain your project focus here and one person you plan to interview, what five questions will you ask? Guiding on informal interview. As noted above, it can be useful in, in an informal interview to hang the flow of your questions on a mental framework, guiding the interview through general topics and questions while letting questions also emerge in the moment. The present past, or I'm sorry, the past, present, future structure is one useful way to do it. Come up with three general questions for each period that you could ask in an interview for a project you are working on or dream up a project that interests you. The past, the present, and the future. Can you think of another mental framework you could, 
ping interview questions on besides the past, present, future structure explains its advantages. Structured versus informed informal interviews. Here's your chance to use those interview questions you come you came up with in 7.2. Find the individual, classmate, or stranger whom you want to pose those questions to and request an interview. Aim for it to take about 30, 20 to 30 minutes and make sure you start with an explanation of what to expect and ask for informed consent. Start by doing a structured interview in which you keep this notebook open. Follow your questions and write the notes here. Halfway through, close this book and shift toward an informal approach in which you do not consult the questions directly. Let questions emerge as you go and ask follow-up questions. Don't take notes, but write them here after your interview is over. And this will be the end. Oh, let me, I'm sorry, there is one more. Ethical reasoning, ethical interviewing. Generally speaking, ethical interviewing requires the field worker to hold the interview in a place agreeable to safe to the interviewee. To provide a guarantee of confidentiality and receive permission to audio record, publish results, or both, typically received in the form of an informed consent. Aside from the generalities, do you think there are other factors in ethical interviewing? For example, are there certain out-of-bounds questions that you th or things you shouldn't ask? Give examples. This will be the end of chapter seven. Thank you.